second please? I'll start by apologizing. It's a, a personal value of mine to start on time. I'm having a little bit of technical difficulty and some of the visual is important to me. We do have a tech person coming over here to help show whatever's there up there. But we can go ahead and get started with the first part of our meeting. First off, thank you very much for what is Bond Planning Task Force version two meeting five. I want to thank all of you who came. There were just so many people who came out to the community meetings that we had last week and many of our task force members were there. So special thanks to you guys who made the trip to the meetings on Monday or Tuesday. I'm going to read to you a little bit of things. So the agenda, what you would pretend you're seeing it up here for me, please. The agenda. First is a question. Where are we? Second is breaking news. Kind of feel like Alex Trebek's. Yeah. Third category, community meeting dialogue. That's where we're going to break up and talk about what you read and heard. Then we're going to work on determining task force consensus. And lastly, if we find consensus among the task force, then we'll identify two representatives from the task force to join me in presenting to the board. And I don't know how he did that, but that is awesome. That is awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Shepard. So see there, that's exactly what I just read to you. So we're starting with where are we? This is a visual that for those of you who uh, were able to come to the community meetings, we shared this with the community and we highlighted that second step, which was where we are in the process with the reconvene task force was presenting to the community for input. So we've done that. Now we're here tonight, adjust the plan or determine the plan based on the community input. And then tomorrow night we have a board meeting scheduled where we have an information item to present on the work of the bond planning task force. Breaking news. So one of the reasons that I was shuffling in here about five minutes before the meeting starts, which is not my norm, is that today was the day that school districts received what's called their final certified values. We get a projected property value for the entire district and the final values are never what that projected values were. And today was the day that we learned what our final values were. And the reason I'm bringing that up to you is it changes some of the projections and some of the conversation we've had about tax rates and impacts and things of that nature. It's so breaking. We've got some board members in here. They don't have this information either. We literally just got this, but it's so tantamount to the work that we're doing that we needed to share it with you as quickly as possible. So our current maintenance and operations rate is 0 0.9164. Based on our final certified values, because they rose more than two and a half percent, we experience, school districts experience what's called compression. They're m and rate, maintenance and operations part of their tax rate, is compressed by the state. So based on the final certified value growth, our rate is going to be compressed to 0 0.8647, which is in the third line item, a decline of 5.17 cents. So I bring that up to you because we've been having conversations about the m and rate, and a three cent VATRE as a potential proposal. And so this does impact that MNO rate. And so then I played it forward. If, if the group does come forward with a recommendation, if the board were to call for a VATRE election for three cents, the total result for the MNO tax rate compared to where it sits today would be a decline of 2.17 cents. So it's declining by a little over five. If we were to, if the voters were to approve adding three cents back as a part of a VATRE, then the ultimate net effect is a decline of a little over two cents in the m and tax rate. And Mr. Garrett, I saw you had a question. Yes, yeah, so with the new m and at 0.8647, what is the dollars generated compared to the 0.9164? 
right? So great question. What the state does is because, because our property values grew by a certain amount, they define, they say, we're not gonna let local values grow faster than a certain pace, okay? It's 2.5%. And if it goes higher than that, they start to compress your rate. It means that we'll generate, and I don't know the number, I don't even know if we've had time to compare the number, Randy, on that. I mean, we literally just got these. Yeah, but will the number be about the same because they compress it, but the values also went up higher. So is it a wash is what I'm asking. We're not- Essentially it is because if we come out under, the state makes up the difference. And, and we just need to remember on that 0.8647, that's what we call tier one. There's really five more of our enrichment pennies on top of that. So the entire system will shift down about a nickel so that if you add the three cents back on, you're still under by two, two cents. But the net effect isn't additional dollars to the VISD, the state's going to adjust their allotment based on what we're generating locally. So I, I share that with you because then it impacts slides that we shared at the community meeting, data that we'll have to run moving forward. It's a moving process in school district budgeting, and today's a big day in that process. So we're gonna go through a process of having some small group dialogue in a minute, but before we do that, just a brief recap because not everyone was able to come to one of the two community meetings. We had a, just a tremendous turnout, particularly in light of some of the turnout that we've had in prior community meetings. And I wanna thank you for your efforts to encourage our community members to come out. In fact, on, at the Stroman meeting, we had over 100 people there but I asked Mercedes to take out people like myself, Dr. Shepard, our school board members. So they're not included in this count. We had 94 community members, 20 of which were task force members. So that was a great turnout by our task force. And then on Thursday at Shields, we had 76 community members, 16 of which were our task force members. So again, just a tremendous turnout. Uh, particularly in light of some of the turnout we've seen in the past. And during those community meetings, we basically shared the work of this task force and then we're seeking feedback on a variety of options that have been discussed over the course of the last several weeks in the task force. I'm going to walk through them just briefly to make sure that we all share a common understanding. Option one. Option one includes a three cent VATRE. That's the side of the tax rate that would allow to address salary competitiveness. It also includes a, an approximately $50 million bond. You're gonna hear me say this several times. These are estimates now, particularly given the fact that we just received new certified values. These are estimates. And it would allow for some level of priority repairs to be done. Some of the highest priority repairs that were identified by the task force work over the last two years would be addressed here. In the community meeting, we're good, we got it. Dr. Shepard saved us. <laughs> Up at the top there. <laughs> Up at the top there, you'll see that it says no tax increase. I've, I've updated each of these in the bottom with a highlighted, given this new information and what the impact will be to our M&O rate being compressed, you can figure it's approximately a two cent decrease now, the option one plan. Rather than it being a total tax rate wash equivalent to what we currently have, it would ultimately be approximately a two cent decrease under option one. And I wanna clarify before I move on to the other options, it says Proposition A here, and that language is used specifically because that's a proposition the community would have to vote on. The, the community would have to say yay or nay to approving the three cent VATRE to address salary competitiveness. And then you'll see Proposition B, that's a separate standalone vote specific to repairs, facility bond repairs. The community would have to take a separate vote to say yes or no to approving that level of funding to address repairs across the district. Option two 
is going to start out exactly the same. It's going to have the three cent VAT ERE. The only difference between option one and option two is proposition B is larger. Proposition B here at this time was estimated to utilize the current capacity in our INS side of our tax rate. At that time estimated to be a little less than $80 million. Again, we'll have to have those numbers rerun. They will move a little bit based on these new certified final values. Initially, option two was estimated to result in a three cent increase, assuming that the community approved ballot item A and ballot item B. It was initially estimated at the top there to be a approximately three cent increase. Now, because of the new compressed rate information, it's approximately a one cent increase. Option two plus, this is our and. It's this option right here, option two that I'm highlighting in that's red, and then it's plus something. The first one is plus a new Mission Valley. So that's the only thing different between option two and option two plus a new Mission Valley is that you're adding a proposition C. It's another separate line item vote for the community to say yes or no to building a new Mission Valley Elementary. The other adjustment that you'll see there is in the amount of repairs. There's a small amount that would have been dedicated to Mission Valley that's pulled out of this repair amount. And then there's an estimated range because there's some unknowns within the work to be defined. Option two plus New Stroman is going to be the same as option two plus Mission Valley, except now instead of Proposition C being a new Mission Valley, it's a new Stroman. Again, a separate line item vote. Community, we have to vote on the VATRE. They'd have to vote separately on repairs and vote separately on Stroman. Now I skipped over the estimated tax rate increase implications. They were initially estimated at six to seven cents. And they should now say four to five cents here. You have to forgive me there. I put this together really, really quickly. Option two with a new Stroman initially estimated at nine to 10, now estimated at seven to eight. And then the last option was option two plus new Mission Valley and new Stroman. Now we had another additional vote for the community. So the community would be voting four different times, one on a three cent VATRE, a second vote on repairs across the district, a third vote on Mission Valley to build new, and a fourth separate vote to build Stroman new. This one originally was estimated at 12 to 13 cents, currently estimated at 10 to 11 cents. Each of these could come down slightly. We'll have to get with our financial advisors tomorrow now that we have the new certified values to run whatever scenario this group ultimately determines to move forward with. That only changes once a year, or does it, like say for instance, this note that you're gonna get a bond, it's like for 10 years, 15 years, 30 years, is it gonna stay for the life of it, the cents going down, or is it just a one time per year? Every year it changes. That's it, my question. Yeah, it's, 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 set, it, it's set conservatively to ensure that you don't have to raise it in the future but it can be lowered over time as property values grow, because as our property values grow, you're taking in more at that same rate and you're able to pay more toward the debt. So it wouldn't increase short of some 
calamity where property values dropped by a tremendous amount and you weren't able to generate enough money to pay the note, um, that very, very rarely ever happens. So the state is going to adjust, adjust it each time, say our property value changes. Oh, this and that's going to make a difference if your property value changes, like, you know, it was a hundred, like you were saying, a hundred thousand, you're only charging ten dollars more a month. Okay, well, what if it goes to a hundred and fifty thousand, that same a hundred thousand dollar house changes? It's so, and then are they going to subsidize or? they going to change it or is that where the drops down? It's, a, it's important to note that we have the two different types of tax rates. And so the maintenance and operations, that one is set by the state. Mm -hmm. That's the one that I mentioned at the start of the meeting has to be compressed because our values rose. The state sets that one. We can then go to the community and say, do you want to approve one, two, three more pennies? Mm -hmm. But the state sets that rate each year now. The INS side of the tax rate, which is what we use to pay for bond funds for repairs, renovations, and new buildings, that is set locally. The board adopts that rate. So the state wouldn't be the entity to adjust that rate. The, the local school board would. I did have a question. Yes, sir. I went through the comments on the, uh, the uh, things that you sent out. I did not see any comments or any stuff about the remodelization of Stroman. Was that not discussed? I wasn't able at the meeting, I wouldn't be able at the meeting. So mm -hmm. I was just wondering, we had, we had had a, quite a lengthy discussion on that here, and we that there's no comments concerning that at the meeting. So was that not an option that was presented to people or? That's correct. It was not an option that was presented for a potential November bond because uh, when we talked in our last meeting, we mentioned that we don't have the data or the runway to present information specific to what it would take and cost for renovation of Stroman. Now we did have data of a cost that was about the same amount as building new, but we didn't go with some open-ended plan of, you know, you guys tell us about an adjustment to remodel. Uh, we mentioned, I don't know, Mr. Gary, if you were here for the fourth meeting, we had some pretty extended conversation around not having the runway to right. take that to the community. So it's either all or nothing, then you're either going to build or, or not, is basically, what you, is basically what we have to decide here. Not necessarily. Well, that $79.4 million, that would go to some Stroman? To some repairs. Some repairs. Yeah. So then what happens if they, just my thought, what happens if say they, the, uh, the bond, they on option two, plus, 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 they do away with Stroman, and is that going to be reflective in your, your uh, proposition B? Will that be reflected? Right, so. Because, because in your option, if you present option two to the public, you're going to have A, B, C, and D. If they reject D, then you're stuck with 59.2 million for repairs, and that doesn't include anything for Stroman then. That's correct. And so then the district would have to make a decision on how to prioritize addressing what absolutely could be addressed across the district. You're right. So the reason it drops from, say, option two over here, the second line item where option two is alone, from 79.4 down to 59, is because you've got approximately $20 million in Stroman repairs baked in here, potentially. And so those are pulled out. And so that is part of the, what you may call risk of, of this approach, is that if you voted down as a community Proposition D, if it were out there, uh, that you wouldn't have the totality of the dollars available to do all of the identified repairs. So, yes, ma'am. This just seems to the average voter is going to be very confusing. Even when we were in our groups last week, we renamed them one, two, three, four, five because it seemed like that would be easier to vote on than having, like, that's proposition A, that's proposition B. Why can't we do that? Remember, the community isn't going to be voting on what we're looking at here. They're looking at, but you'll have A, B, C, D. It will just, whatever this group decides, let's say all the way to the far right, what we're talking about right now, the only things that the voters will see is Proposition A, yes or no, Proposition B, yes or no, Proposition 3, and it has to be called Proposition, mm -hmm. voting law, and then Proposition B, that's it. 
So they won't get the whole chart I mean, That's this is this is the work of the category. This is the but they won't they won't get that. They'll get whatever you ultimately recommend to the board and the board ultimately says yes to And so we can ultimately walk away here with the task force coming to consensus around option one on the far left, option two second from the left. We can call this option three. Um, for the community meeting, because there's so many moving parts, I was trying to simplify it in my mind of saying it's the same as this one, but you're adding a separate vote for Mission Valley. And then it's the same, but you're adding a separate vote for Stroman, or the full menu, if you will. But we can refer to it as three, four, and five here among this group if that simplifies things, and it probably does. So that's going to be part of the part of your work is is to um, have some conversation after you've had access to the comments. The other thing that I was going to share with you is at the end of the meetings, after the community meetings had small group discussion where you saw the feedback that Mercedes compiled from the meetings, each person was invited to vote for what their preference was at that time. And so we compiled that too. And this is how that came out. And so there was a there were more votes on what, what we've referred to as option five here for the full menu than the other items uh, among the community meeting. And so when we take all of that into consideration, what I'm gonna ask you to do is, when we're looking at this information, I'm asking you, as you read through there, identify common themes. What are the things that jumped out at you as common themes, right? We had 100 and 44, I believe, unique community members who attended these meetings. We gathered some feedback, recognized we didn't get all of the feedback or all of the comments. But of what you were able to capture, I'd ask you to spend about two minutes each sharing what your takeaways were around the comments and around the vote results. And then I'm gonna ask you to share out with the large group from your table's major themes. And I'm gonna kinda hold you to the 12 minutes, so please jump in and get started and share out. A table eager to share their thoughts. Oh, okay, all right, excellent. We look into propositions, can you go back to that one? I can. We looked at option one and two as the group, even though in this, we we've decided that if you look at option two, it's great. And maybe we believe that that 85 number might change if people know that if you only vote A and B on, on two, then C and D go away, okay? And then, then you're stuck with the different money or what happens if A doesn't pass? So we thought to be the safer bet, we would do option one or option two. And we chose to do option two modified but we also think about the one cent increase, but it, with a zero increase to win, because a lot of these comments are they won't trust within the district. And so before you jump out and spend a hundred and, you know, what did that be, 125, 100, 100, 115 million or whatever that is, 108 million, whatever it is, on new schools, maybe you need to gain their trust and do a, a, a proposition. We're kind of like on option one, it's the, yeah. The decrease now that with these new numbers would be around two cent decrease. Basically, raise Prop B a little bit to make that again a no tax increase to get more under that Prop B to use as that instead of going to the option two, the one cent increase. I think we were kind of saying it's possibly that if you do a decrease, either a one cent decrease or something, kind of try and get more bang for your buck now. I think the decrease or the no tax increase will be better for passing. You'll have a better chance of passing than them seeing any kind of increase. So I want to compliment this group. You guys are overachievers. You actually went to the next next conversation. I want to pull you back for just a second, though. One of the things I heard you say was um, was you read things about trust yeah, and the importance yeah, of trust. Thought, yeah, there, there was some like one of these option one. Don't you trust asked me what the, spend money what the thing was. was. And did that surprise you to hear that comment around trust, or is that something you expected to hear? We've been hearing that. Okay. All right. Was there anything else that came out that either confirmed things you'd heard before or thought, or that surprised you as a, as a table? Yeah, I, I, I think that I'm 
for me, the chart was a surprise. Chart, yeah. Just tell the whole story. Because yeah. if my group said, I would put that option out to the voters, but I'm only going to vote for A and B. I think that, that number on that last vote, the 85, I think would be a lot lower if, like, how he had answered the question, asked the question about that Prop B stays the same then on that one at 59. I bet you some people were maybe thinking, well, if this one doesn't go, then we could raise that one or so, something like that to where if, you, if, if that was known to where this, if we're going to lose out on this, if we don't vote both of these in as well, then that number, I bet you, would probably go down on that last option. Okay. So it is important to, to distinguish, and I'll go back here, that the, the repair yeah. number does drop here right. when you add and specifically Stroman. Because of the extensive amount of costs associated with repairs for Stroman. Okay, great. Uh, can I ask this table to share? Con now, I don't want you to tell me necessarily what your group thinks is the best option yet. Can we start with common themes, uh, surprises or not surprises? The common theme of Wednesday's meeting was the trust issue. Before we even start talking with trust, we need to build trust. The other part was was this part about COVID. That was the other common thing. We don't, we don't know what's going on. What our group was talking about was that the VATRE is very important. Okay, and it needs to stand on its own, away from everything else. And the base, the base part is important. The base repairs of $49 million is important. It needs to stand on its own. Then we talked about enhanced about the enhanced, maybe, is that what I'm I'm not trying to say in. We talked about adding enhanced standing by, you know, by its own. But the table that I work with, that we we would like to see Mission Valley and, and, and Stroman put on it, but then they said, we don't know if the community can pass it. It's, it's to the point, risk, risk reward. We'll make some people happy that we included it. We might risk something in doing such. So common themes I heard there, again, around trust, similar to the first group. I also heard some concerns around uncertainty with COVID and, and the economy, I'm assuming, based on, on that comment, given what we're talking about here. Uh, and then some different ways of potentially looking at the options. We'll dig into a little bit more uh, and as we move forward. How about this group in, in the back here? Common themes, surprises? I think, again, there's a lack of trust. I mean, there are comments here like, don't trust the ISD to money property. Uh, we need to improve the quality of education before we start worrying about school. I think that's naive. I don't think people understand that there's a relationship between the quality of the school and the quality of the education. And the third pillar of that is the quality of the teachers. And I think that it looked like to me from the comments that there were a lot of those that didn't, didn't understand that. I expressed to my community groups those nights, you know, just, just it was very prevalent too, the big hurdle is just being uneducated, knowing this big, vast subject we're dealing with and mm -hmm. all that really goes into it. I know definitely having those groups, uh, talks with the community, that was, that was very prevalent, it was very eye-opening to a lot of those people, like, gosh, there, there's a lot to this, um, you know, to factor in. So that, that became pretty prevalent as well. I know that we mentioned that at the end as well, a few months ago. Yeah, they, they talked about the fact that there were funds there. Why haven't we been doing those things? I mean, it just, there's just so much lack of knowledge out there. And that may be more important than the lack of trust, is the lack of knowledge. And that's yet to gain the trust. Well, the, the surprise, I, I think, was the vote. But I think that, that's an indicator that, that you had you had time to sit down with these people and talk to them about what it means. And if they did vote, then they did pay the fine. People voted for it. It was probably because they had a better understanding after the conversation than, than they did going in. But that's, I don't think, going to reflect what's going to happen to the community because you're not going to be able to sit down with the community and talk to them individually. Or collect, collectively in small groups, a lot of ask questions. And there's still an awful lot of folks out there that just don't understand how the schools are funded. 
It's also, as you mentioned, there won't be any tax numbers on the ballot. All there'll be is the dollar amount that you're approving. And so I don't know how you're going to address that when the people go to vote. And it's going to look like, golly, that's a lot of money. That means my taxes is going up. Because they're not, they're going to read social media and it's going to be bad. And just to expound on what um, Dr. Morgan addressed there about what they would read on the ballot, I had walked back to that group and they'd asked a question about what would the community members see on the ballot and what they vote for under those various propositions is not a proposition that reads a specific um, tax increase. For every proposition, it, it reads approving X amount of funds, a certain amount of funds to do a certain type of work. It might be repairs, it might be building a new building in another proposition, but it doesn't address tax rate. It addresses. Even, even proposition option one. That's right. In, in any of the options, it's not going to say anything. And, and that's a conversation that, that we have had about as, as you increase the number of propositions, the complexity of trying to educate the community about what you're doing and the impacts does rise. Okay, so I heard trust and I heard the importance of helping our community to be knowledgeable about what we're actually doing and, and the actual state of things. How about this group back here? So I'm hearing a common thread of importance of informing the community and making them aware. Any any other common threads or surprises for the group? You're saying that uh, when you're putting these bonds and everything, when exactly are you going to introduce that there's going to be a 12 to 13 cent tax increase to the community? When are you going to let the community know that, hey, if you vote for a new strongman and all of this stuff right here, we're going to increase your property tax by 12 to 13 cents? after they voted for it, not knowing, or before. Right. I mean, you've got 900 people over the amount of people that you need that voted against the bond. Once they find out something about 12 or 13 cents property tax increase, you're gonna be right back in the same place. Because not only that, but you're gonna have a lot of people out there that are gonna, that are gonna be pushing no to the whatever you put up there. So unless you're going to put up there something that, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to repair the building. We're not going to charge you no tax. We just need you to approve it. And so if you're going to have to be able to push that and convince them. And if that's what it is, and that's what you're going to put on the ballot, then people will come out and probably vote for it. But as long as you got 12 and 13 tied in there on somewhere, 12, 13 cents or whatever cents, that's higher than 7 cents, because they shut down 7 cents. So why wouldn't they shoot down 12, 13 cents? They're going to say, hey, I don't even know nothing about it. All I know is 12, 13 cents. Uh-uh. I don't want to know nothing about it. My property taxes are high enough already. So to answer, answer your question, and I'll, I'll just go back here really quickly. Um, the charge of this task force is to identify a plan that you believe meets the needs and that the community can also support. And as you make a decision within these five options or somewhere near there, 
then once we know what that plan is and it's presented to the board, then we can start to educate the community, assuming the board is on board with supporting it, about the tax impact. So we, we would do that as soon as there was a determination that we were moving forward with a particular option. Yeah, wasn't that the same with the last bond that you educated the community about? Absolutely. And so some of the conversation has been around in the last bond, all of the bond work was done in one proposition. And so that, that think that is reflective of why you hear here some folks sharing that part of the message they heard from the community was wanting options or choice around what they did. When you see the 12 to 13 cents or what's now estimated at 10 to 11 and may move down a little bit more after we have more information uh, is reflective of if all four propositions were approved. So that's the, the highest end of the increase, assuming all four were approved. Are there any other common threads that came I through from? One comment. Uh, I, I would, I'm sure you're going to, but I would definitely not use M and O. That would be maintenance and operation, and maybe parentheses for what that means, because it's it's kind of cruel to have people to try to figure that all out. So, I mean, I think that's important. To, and that P A T R E. That's like, ugh. But well, hello, that's voter approved tax. Yeah. So it's, it's it sounds good. I'm just saying. That I, I think it's some confusion too on them literally knowing the legality and what's going to be on the voting thing. It's different. Like we're here, we're seeing things that will not represent on the the voting because of what is dealing with uh, legislative or legality of what you can and cannot put on. Just like the question says, why can't we just change it to you know option uh, this or option five? And it's because of the terminology that you have to use. Uh, where it will say proposition, proposition A or So I think there's some confusion on that too, where it's, you know, when we talk about civil lines, okay. but what can be and what can not be. And then I was going to say, we do have some fear that we really need Proposition B more than Proposition C or B. Because that spreads the wealth of the more more campuses, things of that nature, that if we do know what option five, we'll call it. Um, they go, okay, I'll take option A because it's only going to be like five or six million dollars or whatever it's going to be. I'm just going to put on a number or whatever. It's going to be a very small number. Then, hey, let's take the two out. It's the next cheapest one there. I voted two out of the four. And then we don't get proposition B, which would take care of a lot more schools. So that's that's my fear, which if I kind of like look at, look at like a menu option. I like either option two or option four because the most expensive thing is a brand new big school, which we desperately need. But if you go to a restaurant, you're like, man, I don't want to spend 80 bucks on the, on, the, on the tomahawk steak, but I will spend 60 on the on the real nice ribeye. You know, <laughs> that's where it goes. So that's that's my only thought about it because that's how people think they're going to think. You just gave me a vision of renaming the options based on steak choices. <laughs> <laughs> right. Here we've got the skirt steak, followed by the sirloin. I love it. No, that, and, and what you share, uh, Adam, is really important. It's, it's, it's really important to consider. We, we're going to get a lot of education. I think we're going to do better on it. But are we going to educate enough that, that are going to spend the money out of their pocket? I, and I, I, I just, yes, we don't have, we're not against when we just got our property bills right the week before, two weeks before, and then right, our taxes all just went up. We, we're, we don't have that. We have longer, you know, people forget. But still, I can see, again, somebody who's a, I'm a, I'm I don't want to say it that way. A uninformed voter might say, two out of three ain't bad. I'll give them this one and this one because they're the two cheapest ones. That's the way I think an uninformed, an uninformed voter votes. And I want to, because you've got to have people. So I guess we'll that. That's my piece. So. All right, I'm going to thank you very much. I'm going to call you table four right now. Table five. <laughs> Other common threads or anything okay. that, that you a saw? A couple of things. Uh, first of all, the groups. The group Wednesday night was very different from Thursday night. Wednesday night was a lot of realtors, and uh, Thursday night was a lot of retired teachers, which, great, good. Um, about the little uh, QR survey, some, Wednesday night, some of the people had some, there was some confusion because it's, it says, you know, do the QR code. I didn't do it either night since I didn't think I was supposed to. But um, it came up, what do you think, and it had, one, uh, one, two, three, four, five. So people at my group thought it was 
like the good presentation, which I compliment. It was it was great, both nights, perfect. I don't know how y'all did it, but anyway, they thought that that they were voting on the, so they gave it a five. And then underneath, some people saw, and it was kind of a yellow, light yellow color, the what each of the descriptions were that are here on this. So I'm just, I'm not, I don't have an opinion about it. I'm just reporting it. Um, also, Wednesday night, it was Thursday night, the task force members were charged with just scripting and moving the comments along. We gave no comment. Wednesday night, we were not told that. So some of the things that were asked about the trust issues, uh, when and why did our uh, maintenance situation get so bad? They, want, they wanted to know that. Um, they were concerned about giving teachers raises when the star scores are so horrible. And so Wednesday I said, well, some the dis y'all spoke about it at our task force meeting and said that with the pandemic and everything, but some of them said, but these scores, state scores have been bad for a long, long time with the exception of a few schools. And um, we talked about, you know, why if we've got such excellent teachers and want to give them raises, why are our scores so bad? And I said, just because I wasn't told I couldn't say it, I think it has to do with classroom discipline. I think it has to do with uh, campus administrators being in those classrooms and shutting down that problem because we, a retired teacher knows or a teacher knows that one kid can spoil the teaching day for a whole class of 25 or 22 or whatever. So I said that on Wednesday and because I, I truly believe it. So I think that's something we should do in our district. Another question came up um, Thursday night. Why didn't we have any um, community meeting at Mission Valley? I mean, truly, a thousand people could have showed up out there. They're like, I mean, you're a Mission Valley person. Don't you think you would have gotten a big group out of Mission Valley? Which I think would have been great, but that's, that was y'all's choice. Um, and then uh, I did, something that surprised me was, on Wednesday night I had two people ask me where some of the board members were, and then on Thursday, one person asked me where one of the board members was. And I was like, and I do think this board needs to put itself, I mean, I think you're shooting yourself in the foot, the board members when you don't come to these community things because they want to see you. They want to see you. But anyway, that was some of the things that came out. And option one, like an, uh, option one was, you know, if we're going to do anything, some people in our group on Wednesday said they're not, they don't want any kind of bond, anything. They're going to vote no. I'm, I'm just being honest. So. Thank you for anyway. sharing. Okay. Is, is, do we have any other things from this group? Okay. So we, we heard some commonality across the group, particularly around trust, particularly around the importance of information, whether it be information about maintenance and how we've taken care of things uh, or beyond. We do recognize among this group, I'm going to state that I recognize among this group that there's a recognition that something needs to be done, that there's a recognition among many entities that there are needs that exist that need to be addressed. So we're going to go to where this table had jumped ahead a little bit. And I'm going to pose a question to you. This is, I'm sharing with you what I'm thinking, uh, not what I think you should think. What I'm thinking is that when we look at these five, I'm going to call them options right now, these five options, we've got commonality here from two through four, or yeah, two through five. In terms of we got the proposition A, we've got a bond that is going to be a little bit larger and we've got some form of tax increase. All of those have that in common. And then the question is, and it's been posed here, is do we add to that? Do we provide a menu of choices? What are the pros versus the cons of providing the community with more options? I overlaid it with this information, not to try to sway you, just to put it all on one spot. There's not necessarily a right or wrong answer here to this next part of the conversation. But that's the question I'm asking myself is, 
what would be the reasons to add versus not add? What are the pros versus the cons? Because this group, this is a critical night for you to land on, can you come to consensus around the best thing to bring forward to our board as a recommendation right now? Now, perhaps we do it by starting on the end here. And I hope that 85 people said that I gave a five-star presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry, we, uh, Dr. Shepard was there. He, he, he wasn't just technology support that night. <laughs> and, and Mr. Mercer, of course, as well. Um, and, and I did hear a little bit of confusion around that. And if we had to do all over again, we'd learn a few things, as we always will, right? Um, but, but still, there was a large uh, contingent expressing an interest in that. And, and so my question to the group would be, um, does that impact your decision making? And if, if we wouldn't do that option, what would be the rationale for moving further to the left? And if we're gonna move further to the left, where, where should we land? Because remember your charge is to come up with a plan, the best plan you can, that you believe the community will support. And I'll drop it there. And I think just I would reiterate, sort of hammer the point home, that this will all be made public. So if and when the community sees that there was sort of overwhelming support for number five, I want to be really dialed in tight on why we say that was an uninformed vote. Because because we're going to have to explain that to the community if that's not the direction we decide to choose. And so I'll want to be crystal clear on that because it'll be incumbent on Greg and I to explain it to the board and the board to explain it then to the community. Could we show the sense the way you show sense on proposition A, show the sense on B, C, and D on option two with both pluses? I'm Instead sorry. Of that whole overall 12 to 13 cent? Yeah, you mean can we show the impact to each line item? Yes. Yeah, we can. I mean, I can tell you what it is sitting here right now, approximately. Again, all these numbers have to be rerun. Okay. We know it's three cents here. Right. Um, well, I say I can tell you. I know that right now it's estimated that this is about two and a half cents. Okay. And this is estimated about seven and a half cents as a standalone. I believe on option five or option two, whatever you want to call it, I believe that I agree with your reasoning back there that people like it because you gave them a choice. And, and not to say that those are going to pass or fail, but there is a choice there. And, and I believe that that's what overwhelmingly drove that 85. I don't believe that all those are going to pass. I just don't believe it. Uh, but I believe that the choice is they like the idea of the choice. Are we willing to live with the choice of that? <laughs> this, this, can I ask a question? Yes. Does giving the choices, the five, or the four choices, excuse me, does that help us build trust with the community or does that erode trust? It doesn't. It doesn't what? I don't think he gives it. Does it, it doesn't build trust. I don't think they want choice. I, won't, they want, I think they want uh, uh, I don't feel say. ownership in the decision making. Well, not ownership, but I think, I think they want physical responsibility is their is their, uh, that's what they base their trust on. Is physical responsibility. Okay. Another thing, if I can, or, go ahead. Well, we were talking about trust. One of the things that I hear people come up is, well, how much do we still owe on the other bonds? You know, so that might be something to address in a, in a PR campaign. Um, and then they're like, who pays for these PR campaigns? Who paid for everything from the last bond, you know, promoting it? They want to know who's paying for that. Um, you know, on the trust issue, they want to know um, why is this school, you know, Mission Valley, where, you know, you need to do a, a video or something going through the school and showing, you know, the things that are wrong with it. Um, are, but the children are still going to be educated, even if they're going to be displaced for a year. Or two. That's cool. Um, that's another question. Well, what are you going to do with the kids while they're, you know, these are all questions that people are asking. What are you going to do with the kids while you're building? Are they going to be in there listening to all this noise? 
Um, I mean, that sounds like a detail, but it's a real concern. Sure. These were, and that's the thing why I like the community meeting, because these were addressed. Yeah. I believe right. that the community yeah. meetings yeah. were more detailed than these meetings. So okay. it was addressed in those, in the, in the presentation. You covered the shebang in that. Uh, now, of course, the PR thing, you I mean, once again, you know, they'll tell you certain self promotes for the bond they cannot do, you know, for legality reasons. But certain, say that again, certain like an independent would come in and, and support, and they can do the after paying for it, but the school board themselves cannot, you know, for legal purposes, cannot just self promote the bond. If, if Doc, can, can, can you explain that better than I can? I'm going to come to you just a second. Okay. Once the board calls the election, the vote in the election, okay. that it's going to happen then we can no, I can no longer advocate for it. I can only provide information to the community. Oh. So what about school board members, teachers, all that, uh, counselors? Different, it's, it's different degrees of what they can and can't do. Essentially, um, the closer you get to the school board, the less advocating you can do, right? So I can't do, like, I'm always superintendent. You see me at HEB, I'm superintendent, right? So I can never advocate. Greg probably could never advocate. When you get to the assistant superintendent level, it's maybe a little bit under evening time, personal computer, personal uh, you know, uh, email addresses, and what have you, same for teachers. So they have a little bit more flexibility in advocating as long as they're not functioning as a school employee. Mm -hmm. And, and kind of nice. <laughs> just one follow up to what you mentioned there also, and then I'm, I'm coming to you next, sir. Um, as Dr. Hunt mentioned, uh, many of the things that you brought forward are important questions to answer. Uh, one of the things I mentioned to this group in the first meeting was a pain point for Ashley and myself was that we did like 60 something community presentations, internal, external videos. Everything you mentioned there, we answered in multiple formats and we recognized that we still didn't reach our community like we wanted to. So that's another area of advice after the end of this where I'm gonna be seeking uh, advice from you on avenues we've missed to meet uh, they that just, communication like, need. Like, how did you access it? Media, television, yeah. television. New, Samantha wrote multiple articles about some of the things you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are all, all sorts of avenues, but we, we, we still missed people. We missed a lot of people in that process. You find out what you want to know if you want to know it. And so people tend to put their blinders on unless it affects them. We have There's to make them want to know it. Like and, and, yeah, and ha that's a great that's a great comment. How do you make people want to know? Because if it doesn't affect them and, and what's going on at their house, then they don't care. And I'm going to pull back from here just a little bit because that's going to be an important part of our conversation only if we decide what we want them to know. So we got I got to stay focused there. And it's your turn, sir. I think option five is just like I said, a huge mistake. Anything past option two, the second one up there, and it comes back to the trust. The community only sees y'all wanting money, and that is it. That is all the community sees from this BISD. How much money can we get from you? We want money. How much will y'all let us have? That is why y'all have the trust issues. Until something starts being addressed about what you're going to do for the children, how you're going to better educate them, and how you're going to better discipline, pay teachers and stuff, you're never going to pass a bond to the city, ever. I guarantee you. So that is what we have to, I think past that option two, I think that is a perfect one. I think it allows for some good stuff and it allows for y'all to make some changes. But just for y'all's sake, until y'all start addressing those, nothing's gonna happen. That's, it. That's where the trust comes from, the discipline and educating our children. And all they see is, especially on the voting ballot, this million, this million, this many million, this many million. And I mean, and that's what a bond is, I, I get it. But until, and I'm pretty active in it, and I've never heard nothing really coming from BISD is a solution as to how this is going to equate to higher scores and retaining teachers. I mean, that's just the consensus with everybody. So I think past that option too, nothing's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. You can take this from different perspectives, but we've had two bond failures in a row. Bond 1.0, bond 2.0. If this becomes bond 3.0 in the voters' mind, it's dead on arrival. Mm -hmm. This must look different. It must be different. It must have a different emphasis to say, we've heard, we've listened, and we're changing. 
Thank you. I, he I hear you. Um, <clears throat> to me, I think that option two is the ultimate way to create distrust, at least for me, because I feel like you're throwing seventy nine million dollars at band aid repairs, specifically at Stroman and Mission Valley. It's just a waste of money because we're still going to have to go back to the community in five years and ask for more to keep those schools afloat and make them actually usable. So, to me, option two is the most the, the way to create distrust for folks like me. I'm like. Let's spend the most. Let's fix, actually fix these problems from the very basic level and, and make sure that we have good schools for these kids and teachers to teach in. And so, um, and then I'd like to say just for throwing everybody kind of, of course, our whole community and um, kind of terms out there. And so I'll say, I see a lot from the ISP besides just asking for money personally. Thank you. Oh no, 85 people, that one, what exactly did the 85 people like about it? Did they like that they were going to vote for rebuilding Stroman and Mission Valley? Or did they like that they were going to vote for A and B? Was there a breakdown of that? Or did you just took it as so just for that option? I think yeah, just yeah. for that option. Just, just for, for that, that actually option. option. So like even if they had that option, what was right. it? Did you find out well, what was it exactly that they loved about the option? That's what they had small group conversation well, at the community what meetings about. I mean, in actuality, I don't see too many people voting for C and D. And, and the way you got the A and B circles, I mean, that, that would be the one to go with and just drop C and D. Don't even mention that. So we're only going to mention whatever the task force ultimately recommends. We're not going to bring this menu out to the community. Yeah. We're going to come forward with one plan. My, my question would be, based on just the initial conversation, I'm not hearing a lot of conversation around option one. And so part of my goal is, can we whittle down from five to somewhere? And it doesn't have to be option one. It's just that's the one I haven't heard much conversation around. Is that one we could take off the board? Well, well option, option five is A and B chose 59 to 49, but if there's no tax increase on option five at 59.2, that's like $10 million more. Wait, wait, wait. And wait, 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 time out. Okay. Let's focus on the question that Greg's asking first. I think let's get an answer for that question because I think that, that will lead us to, well, to better conversation. More that was the one with um, option one, I believe that majority, you know, most of the majority, we've not had a lot of conversation on this because we, I believe that we know that majority would go for that option. Um, I think we're trying to create awareness of that we should do more than option one in here. So you don't hear that conversation because we know that majority, if that was on there, it'll go. Am I, just, am I, am I wrong? Or, or Let me reframe the question then. Does anyone feel like we should not do more than option one? Like we should stop at option one, that's the most that we should look at doing. Uh, Greg, in all, in all honesty, you circled two, you didn't circle one. Well, I, I was just meaning I, that I, there's a we similar- We concentrated on two, 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 because that's what you circled and told us to talk about. Gotcha. Circle number one, and let's go back to the conversation. But this conversation was that, I hate the word, we don't trust you. I didn't say that. I didn't say, that Quentin doesn't have a great idea. Gre Quentin has a great idea. Greg's got a good idea. So don't even, don't Look, don't th th don't, th yeah. we are doing something to accomplish something, but we're back to the same silly thing. We're gonna roast you. Uh, we got to build the trust, and the only way to build the trust is to be very good stewards with our money. So we have to go back to one because it's who will increase. It's a decrease. It's a decrease. Yeah. Right? No, net increase, it's a it thing. You're going to pay the same on your property taxes regardless. Our, our ta if the rate goes down, but the value goes up, you still have a net zero. It's a net zero. It yes. depends on how much it drops. No, nobody. Nobody house value drops. No, I'm talking about the rate, the tax rate. Rate drops. I mean, the reason the dro it dropped is because the valuation went up. When the valuation goes up, Right, there's a, yeah, there's a compression point. But everybody pays the same amount, whether it's it did it last year. I, 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 I defer to Randy on that. I think, just sitting at this table, that, that there's a strong feeling that one is very much still on the table. That's all I was looking for. Is there a way for us to whittle down from five? I vote get rid of number five. 
the reason why I'm going to tell you that is because, A, even the, on the last meeting that we had, there was a lot of mixed discussion on how to do those projects, whether to rebuild them or remodel them or what kind of building to do and that and that kind of stuff. So we had a, we had a lot of miss or a lot of the discussion on both Mission Valley and Stroman on what to do with those. And that did not get resolved from the community meeting. There was no ideas presented to get those to get feedback from the community community on those meetings. Therefore, we're still at our point that we were before the community meeting on buildings on C and D. Okay. That's what got you in trouble in the first place, C and D. And I'm not saying it doesn't need to be done, but I'm not saying the building is maybe the best route. We I think you need to look at that and evaluate that and see what the community says on that. Not necessarily us make that decision. Kathy? Your question reminded me the federal funds and everything attached to all the work and the new vision for Strong and everything. Those stay or do we have to build a new school for those federal funds? Or just the, the program stays in place? Great question. So the question was for the funds that we've been getting to build the programs, the staff academies or what have you. The only funds that we've been able to secure are state funds. Eventually, we do have to have a, a STEM school. And you all have been in Stroman. We're not kidding ourselves. That building was not designed to be a STEM academy. Right, so we're piecing it together as best we can. Yeah. I, the reason we did not get the federal grants for $14 million that we wrote for is because we don't have a STEM building. We got close, but we lost points when they, when they come to the, the grading criteria because we have not invested in the facility to support that sort of a curriculum program. We've had a hand up here. One of the things, and it was from after the last bond, a lot of discussion in the community was not so much that they didn't want to rebuild Stroman, but they didn't re want to rebuild it there. And if certainly Dr. Bella Santos can speak to that, you know, with her constituency, but a lot of people were saying, we don't want Stroman to be there because we want it to be somewhere else, like e like in the behind East, I think the district owns that land, like they did Cade behind West. So I just wanted to bring that up. So it might not be that they, they just don't want it to be where it's at. And where did that come from? What? The, after the last? I know. I was wondering where that information Just people talking in the community, you know, because we're not here to shut everybody down. I'm not here for that. I want something to pass. I, I understand that something has to be done. I just, I think we need to. Is, is there anything we can do like a secret vote, you know, like tear up this and you want to rule it down and kind of get a consensus? It's sort of like that vote, you know, the, the, the online like the House vote. Of well, is anybody scared to vote out loud? I'm not. I'm not. Is anybody no. hesitant to vote out loud? I mean, if not, I would say, yeah. I just, let's yeah, just do exactly. a straw vote real quick. All right, let's do that. Oh, you know, yes. Like I, was saying, I just think there's still things that are questionable, uh, questions like, so in one of these we were going to do teacher raises. Is that correct? Is that, is that? That's on all of them. Yes, sir. I got that. But I mean, that was Proposition A. Yes. That was teacher raise. Was there anywhere in there that was going to be maintenance raise? Now, uh, let me clarify, and, and thank you for bringing that up. And, and we did address this at our, our second or third meeting. I shared, somebody asked the question, I shared our TASB uh, market study, and it's been our intention from the beginning to address salary competitiveness across our entire district, teachers and others, because the study said that we are not competitive across all of our categories. And so the VATRE is to support staff competitiveness. But what is staff? Is that what we're talking about? That's the 2,000 and something employees that we employ as a school district. That's the entirety of our school district. And in fact, the data I shared showed that some of our administrators are the least yeah, competitively sure. paid. So we're justifying that with data. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> but, but Proposition A is included in any of these options yes, to address that, that. absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, well, let's see. Okay, so... Um, Where's Mercedes? You got your, you're ready? Okay, so we'll just start with option one, and I guess I don't need to say. So what are you asking? Board members, if it, which, which one you personally prefer, or, or do we want to ask it as what you think the community will support? There's no blending of anything? Well, we are the community. 
Well, some, of, some people will tell me I support, let's just say, option five, but I don't think the community will ever vote for that. And, and so I guess my question is, are we better served to hear a personal preference or what you think the community will support? I think you should go more well personal because when you deal with uh, what, what you're trying to assume what someone else will do, you can mess up. Because like you said, dealing with the graph, again, what you assume, the numbers didn't come out the way you assume. So if you go with an individual, speak for on what you individually want. You know, and that's, I just believe that you get a more accurate, you know, I, I agree with that, what you're saying, individual sounds good. But the other part about this too, if you're gonna ask for votes now, isn't it true that we also said that if we if we took uh, Proposition 2, uh, whatever they have, A and B, just do A and B, and, and I'm, why is there 79 million for the option two one and just option one is 49 million? What was that about again? It's about this three extra cents. Gotcha, so this, I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, the deal is, if we go to, then this, that doesn't put this out the way. I was under the impression that then we would get everything going again, and we would still come back and do mission, build Mission Valley, and build Stroman or whatever we need. Doesn't that does that mess does that mess that all up if you vote for? I mean, it just seems like you need to either go all or nothing, even if it's 12, 13 cents more increase. I mean, then we're back where we were again. Well, that is a part of the conversation that the group has had is that embedded in here are some fairly significant costly repairs to Stroman okay. and whether or not you wanted to invest in those repairs, particularly if you thought you'd want to come forward and look at rebuilding, for example, or building a new campus sometime in not too distant future. Just, just real quickly, Proposition A stands alone. I guess we can all, we, we might be able to, Proposition A one B Proposition B is forty nine. That should be separate. Then it, Proposition B two is an enhanced. Those two are two completely different animals because the valuations are different. We have to vote on A separate. Yes, B separate, and then Proposition two B separate because it's a completely different enhanced version. And it should stand on its own. Do we want to add? Do we want a zero increase? And do we want to enhance? Then we go to Mission Valley and Stroman. Those are the four options that we have. A, but Thatcher, do we agree with Thatcher? B, uh, okay, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Did that make sense? Well, can, can, can we safely do this? Let me, let me. Just try to take it one step at a time. Proposition A. Yes. Is there anybody that's a no to Proposition A? Yeah. All right. So Proposition A, let's just it, yeah. sort of take it off the table. Okay. Now, Dale, I want to restate what I think I heard you say. It's it's on the table. Mercedes, write down that we're doing a VATRE. <laughs> it's on the table. It's. It's on the table. Okay, I'm gonna to try to restate what I think I heard you say, Dale, and I, I may be wrong, so please correct me. Are you saying that within, option one's kind of obvious, either you're saying, yes, we wanna do this level of repairs. In, in, in my mind, the way I look at option two is, you're, you're choosing either I wanna do this level of repairs, which is gonna result in an ultimate uh, tax rate decrease, or you're wanting to do this level of repairs, which is going to result in maybe not, now it looks like maybe a one cent increase. Are you saying that we would put before the voters, say, $50 million as a, a repair bond and then also put before the voters a separate $30 million yes, repair you bond? Group needs to decide that. Yes, sir. That's what you're describing is we're going to do these repairs and then approve Thirty million dollar, and then an additional thirty million dollar. Okay, and so uh, my question to the group would be, um, and I don't know the right answer to this, does does that confuse the public if we're going with two levels of repair bonds? It's my question to the group.
Yeah, it is, it is, I, I hate the way that we have to do this by law. Um, yeah, and you can't do if A, right. then B, but you can't, they can pick B and not have it. Right, what it would actually read is a certain amount for one and a certain amount for the other, but the language would be the same. It would be repairs. Yeah. I mean, it would, it's this broad language around so repairs. Can it, can it say super high priority, next priority? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm asking. It can. It can. I, I would want to say this to the group. I would want to say this. This level of repair right here doesn't even touch the totality of HVAC, roofs, plumbing, and electrical. The, this, this amount. Here, you have that high priority, it's $94 million. Yep. Okay, there's nothing up there that reaches $94 million. That's true. Shouldn't you have, have one of them that reaches $94 million? In this group's discussion? No, no, in this group's discussion, when you were not at meetings, they determined that these were the, the options that we were going to bring forward to the community. So this is, this is the task force's discussion. Yes, yes it would. And I just wanted to point out that this other one would not touch, it, it identified those four categories, but it wouldn't cover it across the district. Whereas, whereas this one. And just posing questions for the group to consider. Is, is, does that confuse the public if we do a 49 and a 70, and, or, or the difference? It, it's not a right or wrong, it's a question. Before the even before the new numbers that came out today, I think there was a there was a kind of an idea among the group that the like you were saying tax the option one was kind of a slam dunk. I think that we can get it passed because it was a no tax increase. So now now that it's a two cent decrease to where you can kind of bump that up even to a one cent e decrease or go back to a no tax back to zero and get more bang for your buck on that prop B. Right, yeah. So, so somewhere between the 49 and the 70. So, yeah, yeah, somewhere, yeah, somewhere yeah, between yeah, the 49 yeah, and the 79. Yeah, 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 for, for no tax yeah, increase. Yeah, you you kind of like watch that. Million. Right. That's kind of what? Zero. Yep, with zero. zero. Yeah. And then we have Esther Fund that will. That's, that's kind of a weird. It's kind of like a blend between one and two to make it the no tax again, zero. Instead of the decrease, we bump the Prop B up, wash that two cent decrease out, keep it a no tax increase, and go with that option right okay. there. It's okay. Now, does it, first of all, does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. not yeah. Whether or not you agree with it or not. Yeah. What he's saying yeah. is, really, if we look across the spectrum of Proposition B, there's only two choices. There's the $49 million choice, which it re represents a two cent decrease. And then if you look across all the rest of the options, they're in about that 60 to $70 million range. Now the reason that, that that changes, the reason that there's $10 million difference is because you can bond for a longer period of time when you're building buildings, so you can get more work done. So don't get hung up on whether or not it's 60 million or 70 million, but it's this notion that your, your INS rate would stay flat. It would stay zero. It would not be a decrease. So the question in front of this group on Proposition B is, would you want to see INS go down, or would you want to stay, see it stay level? And I think we could probably vote on that. Okay. Okay. We could absolutely vote on that. <laughs> so I, I guess what we're basically saying is it's not that we want to see INS stay level, but the total tax rate stay level. Right. 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 Which would bump that up. OK. So, so what we would then be saying is do you prefer would you prefer a VATRE of three cents that also results in a bond that keeps the current total tax rate flat yes, yes. yes. so there's no you say you're going to get it sounds like you're getting something for that right right and you're almost guaranteed can we get a, can we get a show of hands on that how many like that plan one 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16. 16. Okay, so I'm just going to reframe the question to make sure I'm on the same page. We've come to, we have 16 people who said, yes, I like the idea of the VATRE and a level of repairs that allows us to maintain our current total tax rate. Which would equal a no tax increase. Rate. Yes, and then the question that we're asking next is, so that is, that's actually two propositions. That's VATRE has to be by itself because it's required by law. Then a repair bond that allows for no increase. And then the question is, do we add additional choice of a new Mission Valley and, an, and or, oh, let's just start there. Do we add the additional choice of a new Mission Valley? So I, I have a question. Could we propose a bond where we have an A, in a B like we've decided, and then you have a tax increase for, uh, then you put a Mission Valley on there, and you put a Stroman on there. If everybody, if they choose these, they know it's going to increase them this much for this one, this much for that one, and you still have $79 million in repairs. That's basically yeah, option, that's, that's the last option on the end. I know, it's going to raise taxes. Yes, so uh, my, my question I'll ask you just for right now, raise your hand if you believe that we should add a new Mission Valley as a third additional option for the community to vote on. That's seven. Okay, now I'm going to ask that same question, but I'm going to ask it regarding Strowman. Do you believe that we should do what we've already talked about, the VATRE, the repair bond with no total tax increase, and then a separate line item for the community to vote on whether or not to build a new Strowman? I got nine. So we're at around somewhere near half of the voting group in here when we get to nine, not quite half of the, I'm calling the voting group not our board members and not myself and people who aren't raising their hands. So can we have a, a little more discussion around pros and cons of placing Stroman since it had more interest than Mission Valley? Well, I wonder I'm going to be dead honest with you. My biggest fear about not going forward with the Stroman and Emission Valley is we've talked about trust and trust and more trust and a little bit more trust. How does it look to the community when we go back to them now and say, no, we were just kidding. We don't actually need to do anything with the Stroman and Emission Valley. Or worse yet, I just need to get this first one passed so that I can come back two years later and get you to pay more. When you talk about, when you talk about trust issues, that feels to me like 
like creating serious trust issues. You can look at it two different ways. Of course, I see your point of view with that, but you also look at it as a community. We just told you no. Now you're coming back again. That's right. You know that. You know that's another option. And when I say these things, I'm not directly attacking. You. No, of course. I'm speaking as to what the what I'm feeling like people are saying, what they're saying, but. There, there, I see your point of view, but I also see the point of view where, you know, it's like the little kid, you just asked me for a cookie, I told you you couldn't have one, now you're going to come right back and ask me again? Like, no, you, you couldn't fall. But you yeah. already have that because that first bond that failed had Smith and Shields in it, and now you took them off the table, and you took the stadium off the table, I mean, you know, the, all the repairs for the athletics, so people are already wondering what... Different administration, different people. Well, I'm just, I'm not well, the I'm just, I'm not the community's vote of 85, and it's different than our vote, which is basically kind of what you're saying. And I do want to go back. So, how that. do we explain that to the people that ask us who were in here, right? All of us. How do we explain that? I wanted to say something about that, um, that scale. It was confusing to me. Uh, the, I didn't hear everything that Mr. Mercer said, and what I heard you say about voting, I heard it say uh, you say that not everybody is comfortable at sharing, uh, and so if you're not, then go ahead and do the QR code. That's the way I perceived it, and I had a lot of people at my table. We we all shared, and I wrote everything down, and so I just think there was a little bit of confusion on the QR code and the questioning. So I'm not sure that it's accurate. Okay, well, that's why I have voting yeah. system too. I realized that if you press, you accidentally press one, even trying to get the little, there's like a little message that popped up, mm -hmm. and and you can exit out of it, and then you have all your options behind it. You could even accidentally be pressing one or five of them just to try and get rid of that box, and it takes your vote. You could be voting multiple times on that thing. I believe so. Every single time you hit that number, I mean, it's, you don't know if it's going through. They could have been hitting that five. It was waiting for like a, okay, you voted or something like that, but it wasn't like that. It was just every time you hit it, you were counting the vote basically. And Wednesday, my whole table didn't vote. Right. Because they were going, what's a QR code? Yeah. You know, yeah. All of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had, you know, six people that didn't need right, to vote. Right, right. So. Yeah. so I'm just saying, I just don't, I'm not sure that that's accurate. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's always important to me that you guys have accurate information. And so I think it is important because of the effort to build trust. When, when you mention Shields and Smith were identified as new campuses, they were along with Mission Valley and Stroman and the stadium at a time when we weren't in a pandemic and the cost wasn't the same. And so the initial task force that worked for over a year did consider that. And they even rank ordered and prioritized those campuses among those to be considered for rebuild. So that, that wasn't lost upon us and those campuses aren't Please unimportant. When we are talking, we're representing a community. Absolutely. Just bringing the information to you so we can all make a wise decision. Absolutely, and, 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 and in building that trust, Part of what I'm asking you to do is uh, there's, there's an investment back and forth, right? And we are investing in you to make sure you have access to good information Absolutely. so that you can share it out when the community may have a different perception. And I saw a hand raised. I, I want to say something. I, I, I'm supposed to not say anything here. And, and, and uh, I try to be quiet, but I apologize again. Uh, when we talk about building trust, and I know you all here are our community. You represent our community. Yet there is information that you don't even have that you're able to share. We talk about building trust, and you guys don't even know our physical responsibility where we are. Did you not know we're top in physical responsibility and school district financially? Did you not know that our records are open to anybody in the public and in radically transparent? Yeah. And everybody knows exactly what we spend on every dime? But as we talk around this room, it's like we're hiding something, or we don't know, or we're not in that position. And the trust should be established right here as we're together. And while you take that information out, which we hope you do, you're saying, hey, if you look at their physical responsibility, they're A1 compared around the state. If you look at, of course, transparency, there's not a dime spent that we don't know about. 
Then again, it always goes back to money. But and what are we doing? For and, and that's what you know. What yeah. are your statements? We want to get money. We want to get money. But well, no, that's what I, how the public. Right. Yeah, I'm not personally. And, and, and certainly, as as a leaders of these groups, we hope that you go back and say, "Guess what? You know what? I heard you saying that. Well, guess what? Anytime you want to look at their records, it's available." Anytime you want to see anything, it's available. Mm -hmm. And guess what? They're ranked top in physical responsibility with schools around the state. See, that, but that goes back to the statement that was made earlier. When you want to know something, you go look for it, right? And so it goes on to us as an individual, have we really researched or are we coming off our feelings and emotions on what we're talking about? And so, even going through this, and we talk about when we were talking about Stroman, we know Stroman and Shields was on there. Well, I put it out because y'all think he'd be complaining about it all the time. When I say let's go for an individual, because what happens is when we had this, what was a survey, and I do survey, and you put on what would the community vote for, it changed the whole dynamic of what was priority on this. Sure. And so it wasn't an individual, uh, individual opinion. You're trying to make an assumption of others. And, the, and, and, and that's the thing. My thing is you vote for you what you want, create awareness, like Dr. Morgan and everyone's saying, educate. Absolutely. Because if you create awareness and you educate, whether you think those numbers were wrong or stupid, all I can do is base off the people that I talk to at these meetings. And when you do that, you'll be surprised because to me, I don't believe everybody is Grinch. Somebody that stole your Christmas present. I believe that people have a heart, and maybe it's just a ministerial with me, but I believe that if you create hope in somebody, they will go for to help. And so that's my thing, giving the credit of creating the credit and awareness. But we have to see and be informed ourselves. And so I just want to say I'm shut up though. But that's just that was just the part. So if I could bring us back to kind of what I said before, I don't want to be in a position where either Greg or I are trying to sell you on anything. What I've heard tonight, and I know we're cresting the, the two hour mark here, I've heard that there's support for Proposition A and Proposition B keeps the tax rate flat. There seems to be consensus in the room around that. There is not consensus in the room around Stroman and Mission Valley. There are myriad factors to that, and, and we could continue to discuss that, and I think we should, in future task forces for the next few years until we can get some of it straightened out and potentially come back to the taxpayers when people feel like there's reason to trust the district and, and reason to do something for these buildings. Is that safe to say that we've captured sort of the tenor of the room? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Okay, so I think the next question is, th there's some work that we have to do in preparation for tomorrow. I think, to just put it very poignantly, are you comfortable with Greg and I presenting the will of the task force to the board? Because I think there's still some work done that we have to do to try to make this all work. Or is that something that the task force would uh, prefer to present to the board? Our ideal, uh, goal would be to have a couple of task force members present to the board. And Greg, I'll take it to you. Yeah, well, we definitely um, respect the work that this group has done. And tomorrow night, we do have an information item to bring before the board to provide an update. My intention is to provide sort of an overview of the process and the work. Uh, and then my hope was that we may have two task force members who would be comfortable getting up in front of the board and joining me and sharing um, the areas where the group did come to consensus to make a recommendation. Uh, and so I'm looking for people who are willing to do that. What I would want is to draft some language trying to capture this and then to touch base with whoever those folks are early tomorrow because the meeting is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. And so that's what I'm looking for are two task force members Dale, you'd be willing to be one of those folks to bring forward? I was on the thing, on the thing. I was, did not like that, that last one. I like this one, because we do need it. And the, and the public needs to understand we're desperate to gain that level of trust and to build on the future, because I think the future is very bright with this administration. Thank you so, for... <laughs> Thank you for being willing to, to help me. Uh, do I have one other who would like to join? David, I'd love for you to join us. 
you're willing to, thank you. David's been one of our, um, along with Dale, one of our most dedicated task force members since day one of task force. So I, I'd be honored if, if you two join me. Uh, I'd like to ask you to stay behind for a couple minutes after we do break, just so we can talk about some logistical things. Yes, Ms. Hunt. I'm so sorry. Two quick questions. One of them is, I, I think, I'm not questioning this comment though, but you know, we talked about how we had some folks interested in Mission Valley or Stroma. I think it's one part of the communication too is what if and how much, if any and how much in the propositions one or two there are to repair Stroma in Mission Valley. You know, what amount is in there? And then the other question, I'm sorry, I have to ask, maybe you can answer it offline, but how does that work? Because the board has to set a tax rate in August, but then if this bond doesn't come up until November, if it hasn't, do you kind of like to, can you go back and? Yeah, we've answered, we've answered that for the board several times. And basically what happens is if it doesn't pass, if the DACRA doesn't pass, then the taxes, they, they roll back. Because this is a voter approved, you know, tax rate, right? So the board has to adopt it, and then the community has to ratify it. If the community doesn't ratify it, it just rolls back. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And to your first question, that will be dialed in now after tonight, now that we have some clarity. Because I think that that might make people feel a little better if they know there's something, and then there's a chance you'll get it. Sure. So the contracts are being signed for salary. And then BAPRE is salary based in the future. Oh, so when will that, it won't be this year? So we we've, we've budgeted for the salary increases in, within this year's budget. Okay. Absent the BATRE. Okay. If the BATRE passes, it passes this year. Okay. And then the money that we've budgeted for salary increases this year goes forward to next year. Because remember, we, we do have to pay salary increases at some point in the future as well. So what we're really doing is we're buying the, the district's ability to continue to pay staff competitive wages. If the VATRE is not successful, then we will have successfully paid competitive wages one time, right. Right. and then we're going to be looking to cut several million from our budget, which will come in the form of programs and personnel, so that we can continue to pay increases in the future. And that's just the reality of the situation, and that's what we're going to be trying to communicate to our community over the next several months, is that we don't want to be in that position of we're cutting away programs and people. Okay. I'd like to just lost my information, if you would, after spending 60 years in higher education and life that spent 35 in public education. The future of this community rests on the education that we give our students and that we make available to them. The economic development of this community depends on the educational opportunities that are here. You won't find a company out there that wants to come to the town that's not doing the best it can to educate its students and its future workers for that company. And we get all caught up in a two or three or four cent tax increase, but we are absolutely ignoring the future of the community and the education of our students if we don't provide them the very best education we can. And that has little to do with two or three cents. It has to do with the facilities, it has to do with the teachers, it has to do with the administrators, it has to do with the whole process. And you've got to quit thinking about what does my bill call the people? What does the community need? And the community needs, and I don't think you'll talk to anybody in economic development that won't tell you that that's exactly what matters is the educational opportunity. You've got a university here, you've got a community college here, and you've got a public school system. And all three of those come together. The university doesn't cost you anything other than the taxes you pay to the state. The community college costs you a little because you pay taxes to them. The public schools cost you because you see those taxes. But you don't see the taxes you give to the state because that comes out a penny or two at a time. But the future of this community, of any community, 
is in the education of its students. And if you can't get that in your head and out of your pocketbook, then this community doesn't have a very bright future. Sorry, I just had to say that. Well, to go back to what you were saying about teachers and Emma, I'm one. But, you know, I, I think you were saying earlier, earlier in our meetings we had where the teachers were showing the pay scales and our first year, first year teachers from one to five, they're all on right on there. We're right on there with the state. We're competitive on that part. Where we're not competitive is we're from five on up. And, you know, as a teacher, a lot of our increases that we've had have been stipends. This, and a lot of people don't know that. And it doesn't go towards our retirement. And those teachers that have been working up to 25 years, and for the last several years, six years, they've been going in a stipend. They don't go into our retirement. And we don't see that. And other people think, oh, well, you got a raise. Yeah, but it doesn't go to our retirement. And that makes a difference for the teachers. And so, you know, we're off. And, you know, I, I went ahead and you, three golden pities. I've been looking at this thing over and over since I've been coming to the meetings last year. You know, the three golden pennies gives us 4.9 million. You've got 2.8 million, because I've been counting how many teachers we have, and I know we're short on teachers. We were short, you told us the other day there's a shortage of 100 teachers still lacking. But if you take, if you take at least the five to 10 year teachers and give them a raise, you're gonna keep these teachers. They're not gonna go elsewhere. They, yes, they're here because they care about their kids, but they also care about their families. Some of them are not married. Some of them have two jobs. You know, some of them have other, entities that they're trying to, they make t-shirts at night. I run a decorating business on my own time. You know, and I teach and I teach with dedication. Just like a lot of these teachers. They go home at night. Hours. I spend out cutting and coloring and fixing and preparing for, and I stay. And they have to kick me out at the end of the night because the janitor's saying, hey, Five minutes, you need to leave, Ms. Moreland. We got five minutes left and we're closing the doors. I'm going, I'm going. But it's dedicated teachers out there. There are a lot of them. And there are not, they're getting shortchanged, I hate to tell you. Because they're, they're not getting them into their salaries. It's getting the stipend. And I feel like we need to do this. We need to put it into their salaries. And I know that y'all say, oh, hey, it's, it's a charade, yes. I figured 3,500 for five to 10 years, uh, for the five to 10 year teachers an increase. And then I tried figuring, okay, for the 10 to 15 year teachers to get them to where they're at almost, closer to where everybody is competitive with the rest of the state, 5,500. Then I put in another 15 to 20 year teachers and up 6,500 to get them closer. And the remaining money of those three golden pennies can go to the operation maintenance. Yeah. We need good maintenance. These guys don't get paid. Yeah, that's right. And in order to keep these guys working for us, the maintenance crew, they need that money. They need that difference in that money on those three golden pennies. That's where that money needs to go. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. I'm I talking think, for I think there's a consensus in the room. What, what you just said is what we've been saying for the past oh. hour. So I think there's consensus in the room. So what she's saying is that instead of going to staff, we are going to get property valuations increases, the two and a half cents increase. That can go to staff, but the VATRE is something that we can give a perpetuality to get our, our teachers of five years and up closer to the state level. But so that if our five to 10, 15 year teachers leave, maybe, just maybe, we can bring them in from El Campo and San Antonio because we're paying them high. Right. Gotcha. So rather the staff, we give pittance, just give the real bucks to our, what I call the profit center of our community, our teachers who are actually on the line that we have to give them, depend upon them to 
teach our kids and keep them here. Gotcha. And, and that wasn't the charge of this task force, but we do appreciate the feedback on, on that. Um, Frank, do you have Yeah, I do. I have what I need. Um, what I need is to express gratitude to you for the work and the many hours that you've sacrificed. This is not an easy process. Not everybody signs up to have these difficult conversations. We know when it's such a complex situation that it's not gonna be a simple answer that everyone can feel like it was exactly like they would have wanted it to be. But I admire the work and the commitment of this entire group. I asked you, or I mentioned in the first meeting that I'm gonna still need more help from you specifically around how we can reach our community. So please know that I will be reaching back out. In my mind, if you're interested in continuing to help give us guidance and support, I'm interested in getting it from you and us helping each other to give our community the information they need to build the trust that we need. So my understanding is, is that we're at a consensus point. Is that correct across the board? We are the at zero VATRE bonds up to the zero amount. Is that, am I correct on that? Is that something that every single person in this room, and please don't be afraid to say you're not, is on board with? No. I don't see any notes. Is there a note? Okay, Dr. Morgan said no. Thank you very much. Uh, will you be advocates in the community for that consensus? I think that, that's the piece here is we'll be advocates for it because it helps in any way, right? We're asking for anything. Yes, I think I can speak for a few of my friends that might not be the happiest right now that we're going to be advocates for this. Absolutely. But it wouldn't be the flip side way, right? We know that. And so I think that's the frustrating part right now. Is, Understood. Um, yeah. We won't. Yeah. We'll be advocates for the monetary discussion that we've had, but to build more trust, we need we need more. Like what? Uh, a better product. We need higher test scores. We need, we need, hopefully, with paying teachers more, that will increase test scores. Is that usually a result? No. 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 See, we go back. We're going back to piggyback off. Even though, like, we, yeah, we want more. We're going to we want something to, to happen, so we will push for it. But it goes back to you hearing a lot of us maybe in this kind of session, and uh, Dr. Morgan put it on top. We un it understand that it takes more, like we talk about, you know, like test scores and all that, but environment and all that matters, you know, and, and things. And so it's, it's just one of those things that, yeah, we're going to push for it. And so then when once it's passed, and because Dale's going to make a great job that he pushed that it passes, and then, then they can have the conversations where the money should go for the teachers and the ratings. Is there any study that, I mean, is there, and I'm not being smart when I say this, because I know they said it raises and teaches equation higher test scores. Does brand new school buildings equate in higher test scores? I mean, is there any, okay, okay, I'm not being smart, I'm asking this all, because we said that higher test scores. I think it's important to note, because we have a focus on test scores, that this is not said often enough to communities in Texas and beyond, that the only correlating factor to test scores that's statistically significant is the level of poverty in your community. So if you wanna go judge a community, if you wanna know what their test scores are likely to be, it's statistically significant that it's going to follow the line of the level of poverty in that community, nationally and across the state. And, and is that something we can attack? I mean, no, we can't attack poverty, but we can attack discipline. Okay. And, and, and this goes back to the trust thing, and, and, and so I'm going to get on a little soapbox, not a big one. But a while ago, we talked about information, what's going on in the district. Right now, I will tell you that my 30,000-foot purview of this meeting is we're primarily concerned with dollars, okay? That's been what the primary concern is, and I get that, and that makes sense because we're talking about a bond and a VATRE. Is there enough interest to find out what's being done? Because I'm going to tell you something, an administrative report, that Dr. Shepard puts out on a monthly basis is packed with what is going on to improve exactly those test scores. The data that we receive on a quarterly basis that tells us what those test scores are gonna be before those kids ever take those tests. 
to what you, I, and, I, and again, I, and that's that's the level of commitment I'm asking. Is does that exist in this room? If that information is made available to you, will you be will you be carriers of that information? Will be yeah. champions of that information? Hey, lay it on when it's bad. Okay, I mean, trust me. I've in the two and a half years I've been doing this, I can take it. It's not a big deal. But at the same time, will you be champions? of that information that says, I understand it's bleak right now, there is a plan, and we have given X amount of time in order to reach that goal. Because we do have specific goals tied to performance in our district. So that's what I'm asking you. As, as we are proponents of, of what potentially gets put out to the voters, are we also proponents of what's going on in the district? If you don't agree with it, that's fine too, but at least I'm asking you to take the time to dive in it's very easy to point to test scores when there's not that other side of the conversation that says yes and not yes but but yes and this is happening. So that's that's sort of the yeah, kind of a level of commitment. Great. Right. Here is here because they have right. Yeah. There are the whole community. I do have more questions, but Kev, did you have one? Yes, add to you, uh, Mr. President, the fact that of course we have one of the best administrators in the way of the superintendent in the state of Texas. And if you look at the achievement that's taking place right now, what he's doing, and Mr. Zook would, would, would confirm that, we have a, a man that's moving the needle. And uh, we have to support that person who's moving that needle. Uh, we are in a comedy situation where we're, we're educating 70, 70%, at least 60 to 70% of our student population. There's a problem. And so to, to, to the, staff, the outstanding job that he is doing, and his staff, is tremendous. Yes, the scores are low, and I see what you're looking at, state score. But when you look at what's taking place and the improvements that are taking place, and you, and you really get a magnified glass and look at it, uh, you would be astonished at what our administration is doing. So Thank are you. you asking, Mike, okay, here we've all come together for monetary right. ideas. Are you saying, would we be willing to commit for the other departments, the, the discipline, the poverty, the, I mean, I look at it as, there's gotta be somebody in the country that's attacking that, and why should we reinvent the wheel? Let's just go find somebody that's doing it right, copy them. Well, we, we don't wanna follow that, because we've already brought that, and the reason I say that, those people who are doing well with it are coming together as a community, and they're supporting every area that Doc is talking about. They're supporting by changing the environment. They're supporting it by making sure we have the resources to pay our teachers and get quality teachers. And that costs in the way of blood. Well, it, it goes and back. I, I would add on to basically what, what you're saying is we would like all of you guys to be advocates for VISD, sure. right? Y'all are here for the bond and the, like Mike was saying, the money, but we need you guys to be advocates for VISD in general. I believe and we need you to be part of Q's News. We need you to read the administration report, which is all available for the public. But within that, there's some really awesome things that a lot of people don't know about. And y'all are connected and have your sphere of influence, right, that need to know these things. And they're amazing things that, that VISD is doing. That, I think, is what Mike was trying to point out. Yeah, in a sense, when you believe in something and when you support something, you don't assume the worst you ask a question. Hey, I heard this, is this true? Right. You know, there's, there's situations that come up in a classroom every single day. And so when you hear those things, better than trumpet, oh, they're doing this, and they're, maybe they're not. Maybe that's an isolated situation that's being handled, but you don't know until you ask a question. So that's the level of support I'm asking for. Before we jump to a conclusion, before we think that we're teaching critical race theory in classrooms, or before we do, let's ask the question. And if you have a specific instance, let's say, well, this is what someone told me. Give us the chance to investigate. I guess it's a district is what I'm saying. Don't jump to the worst. Allow us to address it so that it doesn't become the worst. I don't think that would positively affect this school district. Right. I would scream from a mountaintop mm -hmm. and do whatever we can. Right. And like the gentleman back there said, the community gets behind them and it's appalling. And I'm not saying, I've heard tons of great things about Dr. Shepard from a lot of people, mm -hmm. and it's, I, I would say conservatively over 80% of this community completely does not like the structure of the ISD. 
Oh, I, and, and, and should is that the right thing? I'm not saying that's the right thing. So anything we can be given, I would love to work with anybody in here to try to push something positive to try to do something because I have children. Right. And I would love to not have to pay $500 a month to go to OLB. You know, but I would love any, nothing better than to see our community go and to keep these kids here to do this. So yes, anything positive we can Absolutely. do. Right. And anything negative we can hold to. And I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's the consensus I get from teachers and from a lot of people that leave is there is zero discipline. And that might not be the case. They just might have bad experience with the kids. I don't know. And but I think the community, number one, they would love to see some very extreme measures taken to be disciplined. I think that could fix, I think you could correlate more discipline. Look at industrial. They pay their teachers less. They have impeccable discipline. Or from what I've heard, they pay their teachers less. But they have very good discipline structures there. They don't. Well, and again. But I know they have very good discipline. This is not why we're here. Discipline. Yeah. And, 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 and again, I didn't. And we're not going to fix anything. Well, no. I think that that's incredibly important. I think your input on that, and that, and I think that's the issue, is that so many people feel like their voices aren't heard. Your voices are heard. Doc, uh, Mr. Uh, former principal at East, uh, Clark, yes. Clark used to always say, you have a voice, you got to know how to use it, and when to use it, and the right way to use it. And that's what I'm asking you guys to do. You have a voice. It's incredibly important. I'm just asking you. To examine how you use it, when you use it, and in what way, because we want to affect positive change. And it so, does affect the bond when you have a community that right together. It will affect the bond. They will pass. Them. I agree, and I and I'm all about taking baby steps and getting there. That process and building that trust. But I want to lay that out right now. Is I want to know that I've got there's a group of people in this room well, that want what's best and are willing to ask the question before they immediately yeah. assume yeah. the worst. I agree with everything you're saying. I would sit here and say that everybody, in my opinion, you know, majority of the people is a yes. We want because I think we want what's best. Right. Absolutely. You know, and I say that as a person that's married to a teacher that has had seven kids go through the ICP with five still in it. So yes, we want the best. I believe that we will support the best, and we should come asking instead of assuming. All right. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, you're incredibly bright individuals. Some of the discussion that y'all had has blown my mind. Uh, not because it's been outrageous, but because it's been spot on, and I think it's been heartfelt, and I think it's been a direct reflection of the community. The next thing, thank you all very much for that consensus. The next thing is we as a board will have to set a tax rate, okay? It's what triggers that VATRE election. That three cents, that VAT, it cannot happen without the board setting that tax rate with those three cents. I just want to make that perfectly, well, I do that because somebody's going to read it, oh, they're jacking our taxes up. And no, it has to be done. I mean, by law, that's what starts the process. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone understood that. When you read that the board suggested or is, is proposing a tax rate that's three cents above the, the net zero, whatever the case may be, that you understand that in order for any of that to happen with the VATR, that's the first step that has to take it take from that, that step. So I don't want you to feel like you've got rope doped like you've sat through all of this and all of a sudden the board's doing something wrong. But they're going to also say that we dropped the INS by three. We could say that. That's, that's definitely a potential. By saying that, we're, we're reflecting that we can come back to the audience of, I mean, the, the taxpayers of three from staff, salary increases in maintenance, down three before Thank you very much. That's a good point. I am very good. Point. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, great point. Uh, but I did want to to note that whatever we do on the M and O side, it has to be done in order to trigger that VATRE. That's not a surprise type thing. Right. Uh, and the final thing I have: Do you have any questions for the board? Because I know we don't have time for everybody to ask questions at this thing. And I don't know if you have any more or anything else. But do you have questions for us? The one that we're going into this meeting tomorrow night. Yes. Will you make available our task force so that we can, as a group, can go out and advocate for this bond? When you say make available, what do you mean? We need to know who we all are. So yes. The list is that everyone's in agreement. I think that that's 
Because I believe the list is on the website anyway, is it not? I, I can, if, if, if everyone in the group is comfortable with each other having your contact information, then rather than blind copy you for your information, I can send something out to where you have each person's email address. If you're uncomfortable with that, please let me know and I'll ask Mercedes to strike you off of that particular email. If, if you have something, please feel free to stay behind. Uh, thank you so much. And Dale and Dave, if you'll please wait back here with me.